blue card. Jeff, let me let me let me get it right. Haronacek. Haronacek. Man, I was practicing too. Summary. You tell me when to start, okay? All right. Don't leave. This is the best one yet, okay? All right, good evening. So I'd like to introduce you to our uh, startup, Blue Car. Blue Car is a dispatch software, a dispatch application for your smartphone. Uh, we're not a central dispatch, though. Instead, we put that power directly into your hands, the user. So typically, if you need a ride, you call a black car service, uh, the central dispatcher for that company assigns you a driver, or you call a cab company, and the central dispatcher assigns you a driver, or you push a button on a smartphone in a ride app, and the automated central dispatching system assigns you a driver. So no matter how you get your ride, uh, there's just not a lot of say in who it is that's coming to pick you up. But Blue Car is changing that with UDI, a user-directed dispatch interface. With UDI, you can save drivers you like working with, uh, then access them directly on a future ride. So if you need to guarantee your safety late at night heading home from the bar when you're not able to you know, protect yourself, you can uh, do that by dispatching a driver you trust to keep you safe, probably someone you've met before and already have rapport with. And what's cool about this system, hey, what's cool about this system is that users can now regulate the system themselves by weeding out unethical drivers who, um, through their choice to not request them again in the future. So if a driver wants to be on our platform, they first of all have to practice good ethics. And after that, if they want to maximize their earnings, they have to also provide an experience worth coming back to because it's your choice whether you come back or not. <clears throat> so as, more, as drivers realize that that's how this works now, they're gonna put more effort into perfecting their service, keeping their vehicles clean, and expanding their local road knowledge so that the system gets better and better over time. So here's our founding team. I'm the insider to the transportation industry that brings the uh, details of this system to light. My partner here in the front row, Pranchu, is our head of technology. And uh, together, we, have our own, we actually have our own respective companies. I'm in transportation, he's a software developer. And uh, we're coming together to bring this project uh, and this vision uh, to reality to make sure everyone can benefit from it in their own personal lives. So Udi incorporates the ideas found in ride apps such as these here, and actually in uh, adds to that the ability to uh, manage your own list of curated drivers uh, and access them individually through the same conveniences. And that's a, actually a really, really important upgrade to the systems that already exist. Because if you've been following the news, you know that random driver systems such as Uber and Lyft, they're just not always safe. So while regulators understand this risk and are pushing for the FBI fingerprint background checks, um, there's actually a much simpler solution to the safety of the public. And that's, that solution wasn't possible before the phone-to-phone uh, -phone GPS tracking technology existed, but it is possible now. And that solution is to unrandomize the system by giving users a choice. According to our surveys, uh, more than 90% of users would actually switch to a different app system if, they, if it gave them direct control over their user selection, their driver selection, rather. 70% uh, also wanted the option to book a trip in advance, so we're going to offer that as well. And uh, what this tells us is that there's a really big uh, pie out there for us to take a piece of in the DFW area, uh, probably also nationwide as well, let alone internationally. So, in fact, that pie doubles, sorry, that pie size doubles when we consider people who have never used a write-up because they don't trust random drivers or because they need to pre-schedule their service. Now, who are we targeting? We're actually targeting uh, the drivers. Unlike other ride apps on the market who target the riders as their main customer, we're targeting the drivers because we believe that giving drivers a real career opportunity uh, rather than just a gig is going to offer them the, the stability that they need in their businesses um, to, uh, sorry, excuse me one second. Uh, the stability that comes from a repeating client base, uh, that's going to that's gonna enable them to dig their feet down and develop real careers. And, and compared that to other companies that offer only a gig, you know, a, a part-time job for people that are relying on their uh, day job. And that's what's going to set our drivers apart from the field. They're going to have a lot more motivation to practice and get good at their, their craft. Uh, also, that'll give us tens of thousands of avenues for free local targeted marketing through these drivers trying to promote themselves on our platform. So the key here 
is to give our tar their target markets, which is all of you, uh, direct access to them as individuals through our user-directed approach. In fact, our whole business model is simply to take a back seat and play an administrative role for these independent drivers. Uh, we handle their back office systems, payment processing, business development, and marketing, and let them focus on being out there for you and improving what they do. We're very excited to get this project going, but we actually need some partners to make it happen. Thank you. Wonderful. So, all right. Um, are, so, I guess, uh, are you launched, and how do I start using it? We're pre-launch right now. We're in. We're doing. Uh, we're in beta process, and we are doing a redesign after getting some important feedback from drivers and riders alike. Should be out by September, if we get the funding needed. So, how does the pricing compare to like Uber or Lyft for the consumer? Uh, we're we're in a price category with uh, uh, Uber Black. So because we're only partnering with uh, black car services at this point, uh, we will be looking to expand that to either cabs or regular car drivers later I mean, can you give on. me specifically, like, I mean, are you charging by mile and by minute or just by mile? Or? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. We, we do that a little differently. Um, if you're moving, it's by the mile. Um, I know Uber does both. They have a small per minute charge and a per mile charge. Um, we're only going to do per mile if you're driving. And if you ask the driver to pull over at, like, a gas station, then he can flip his switch and charge per minute. So... Uh, because of that, our prices should be actually a little bit lower than uh, the black car prices on our competitors. Okay, uh, how do you deal, I'm over here. Yes. How do you deal with uh, your near-term threat, which would be Uber basically doing exactly this with a software update, and your longer-term threat, which is what Uber is probably got their billions of valuation for where your drivers with careers are replaced with automation okay well uh, to the answer the second part of the question I see what I see going on in the future is a dichotomy so in the past 75 years ago there was one kind of car a cab and someone had the brilliant idea of saying uh, call me before you need a ride and we can pre-schedule it that guy branched off into the black car industry the other guy who didn't say that kept going on the cab side and now we have two different branches of our uh, ground transportation. I see the same thing happening in the future. Uh, half of it will go towards driverless cars, the other half towards people. Uh, the, the first part of your question, what's going to stop Uber from copying this? And I think that this, this idea goes completely counter to their revenue model. Uh, their idea is to replace cabs entirely, and if they, they want to do that, they have to have the coverage. And there's such a disparity of talent from their worst driver to best, if they started directing traffic towards the best drivers, the worst ones would, be, would go out of business, they'd lose the coverage and lose their mission statement. Uh, how much funding do you need and how are you acquiring drivers into your system? Well, I actually am part of the DFW Limo Association as a limo driver, uh, so anytime I need to, I can go over to Dallas and uh, present in front of about a thousand drivers, get them all on board in Dallas and uh, Fort Worth, uh, so that's a good start. Um, Marketing is going to be largely self-directed, so we'll save a lot of money through that since, the, since there is like a parallel, you know, uh, benefit for the drivers marketing themselves. They get repeat business from it. We get our platform marketed through that. Does that answer your question? Great. Um, why are you guys not charging more than Uber Black since it seems like this service is actually delivering a lot more value than what their setup is? We will. <laughs> Hey, Absolutely. If I'm an awesome driver and everyone wants to drive with Winston, shouldn't I be able to charge more, kind of like the market? Yeah. Um, actually, the um, we're gonna we're gonna distinguish between on-demand and pre-scheduled pre service. Uh, with pre-scheduled, every driver can charge their own prices because you all have time to price compare. But with uh, on-demand, it has to be uniform. Is there a union of black car drivers or limo drivers? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And actually, there is. I wouldn't say a union like you know. In, that, in the sense you're probably talking about, but there is like a, a network and we all take care of each other. Yeah. So I've got a question about the implementation and I'll take it to the extreme case. Suppose there's one driver that's fantastic and everybody wants to ride with him. And as a result, nobody requests rides with any other drivers. How are you, <laughs> even if the other drivers are pretty good, how are you gonna make sure those drivers don't get eliminated from the pool as a result of nobody requesting them? 
there's so many customers, so many riders that need rides that that person who's really good will just get full and everyone else will overflow. Uh, we actually have a system for finding drivers and if you find them, uh, if, if, um, the, and they're ranked based on how many new likes they have each week. And so as they stop getting new likes because they're getting all repeats, they'll fall to the bottom of the list. 20 seconds from well. I'm actually quite curious because I'm um, quite curious, like, what was that cricket sound during the presentation? Yeah, seriously, right? Like, that was outright disrespectful. Modest opinion. Like, I mean, threw off my mojo. Just, like, that wasn't cool at all, guys. I just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, someone's presentation. Like,